When I was going through the course I took to get an introduction to UX design and to work on my portfolio, one of the major struggles I had was the usability testing. And not that I didn't understand usability testing, I get it. Like I already actually do usability testing at my day job, but just getting people to participate in the usability testing was a challenge. People are very unreliable and that's the main problem that I had when I was doing usability testing for my projects. It was really hard to get people to commit. I would get a bunch of people that would be like, oh my God, I'm gonna do it. And then I would send them the material to do the usability test. And then I wouldn't hear from them or I would have to keep chasing them. I'm not saying like it was with everyone. There were a ton of people that were willing to help that were super reliable. What I am saying though is, it's really hard when you have a deadline set for your project around a timeline and people are unreliable. Now that I'm done with my course and I'm fixing up my portfolio projects, I'm seeking out to do final usability testing on my projects that I've decided are going to be portfolio pieces. It's very important to have impact data in your case studies about your project. Even if they're conceptual projects, it's still important to have impact data. The data that you get from usability testing can translate into impact data. Seeking out to do usability testing on these projects, I wanted to avoid what I had done prior. I was sending out a Google document with a link to my prototype. I wrote up the questions, like I was shepherding people essentially to get their answers. And I wanna avoid that this time around. I want my focus to be writing my case study and plugging in the data that I need. And that brings me to a service that I found that is for unmoderated usability testing and it has saved me a lot of time. And it's called Useberry. It is so awesome. Like I just ran the usability testing for one of my case studies and I got data back basically same day and I'm super happy. It was super easy to use. So I'm gonna jump into the computer, I'm gonna show you Useberry, and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. This is Useberry. When you make an account, like this is what you would see. I have my project that I already did here, but when you sign up, like there's, I think it was three different plans. There is a free option. It doesn't have as much features as the pro one does, but the features that it has works for what I needed it to do. But essentially how it works, you make a project and because I am using the free one, I can only have one project, but that's the button you would click. It's telling me to upgrade because like I have one project already in here. This is like what a project looks like. Like again, like this is one I was doing a test with, but when you start a project, you have an intro screen. It pretty much templates the intro screen and then this thank you card out for you, which is super cool. You can add things like I stuck with basically like everything that I wrote, except I added there are no right or wrong answers. I just like putting that from when I did it through Google, the Google one would always have us write that. And I think it's like really important to tell people that their answers, they're not being graded on in any way. You can do screening questions or upload an image if you had the pro version. I don't have the pro version, so I don't have access to those, but the screening questions, like I would be super interested in using if I was doing this with like a project I was launching because it is making questions that depending on how people answer, they either are denied doing this test or they're able to do this test. So it's a way to like filter out like who's getting into this and making sure that your target users are the one taking the test because that's where the data is gonna be valuable. And the one that I built, I have my intro, a welcome, I have multiple task questions and thank you. But the way that like you build this, it's through blocks. And if I wanted to like add more to this test, you do add block and there's like, many different blocks you can add. Like some of these, like obviously it says pro, I don't have the pro, so I don't have access to it, but like multiple tasks, first click, five seconds, single task, yes or no. You can add more questions, welcome, tree. 
a preference test, card sorting, S like super interesting. When I was building this, I was clicking through it a lot, but like just for demo, like single task. So like you add that and then you click it and then you would load in your prototype. Like it shows these that it works with. So that's like really cool. I was doing mine with XD because my project was through XD, but like you could do with Figma, super awesome like to have like so many options, but I can add my flow from here. The flow doesn't like matter. Like right now I'm just demoing this, but you would add your task. So like, and that would be your task name. And like, it's so cool. Like right here, it shows you. And then you would write instructions. And then you have your start screen. You can change this. And then your task completion, you can have it set to a click path that they have to go through or on a specific screen. And then you can pick the screens from your prototype that's like loaded in. And then like you can toggle on and off if they have a success screen. Super cool. Session recording. You ha can turn that on or off. Yeah, that's just a little demo of making a block. The sharing options you have are really simple. You could share by a link. So you copy right here to get your link. You can turn your link on and off. So when you're first launching this, it's obviously gonna be off and you just hit the toggle to turn it on. And then when you're done with your usability test, you would just like, and turn it off. You can specify which devices you want your test supported on. So like if you were only testing it on mobile, you can turn off desktop and tablet, pretty cool. And then sh the share settings allowing repeat testing. And then there's a way to embed it on a website if needed. Super cool. Then there's this like target audience sharing, which I think that is where Useberry really shines and this is a paid thing. I haven't dabbled in it. I might. I'm thinking about it for the media lunch break project that I'm doing. But you create a target audience and then a target audience amount. And you you have to pay, like again, like I said. But it then sends it out to a pool of user testers that Useberry has super cool and it like screens them and stuff and then so like you have your test like what up you have your test all set up it's out sharing and then you have your results page and this has so much data so much and it's very like detailed i've just started to really go through the data that i've been getting i had to clean some of it up i will say that something to keep in mind if you're using this I had a very large drop off rate. Like I think this is like, okay, pretty even, which kind of makes me a little worried about the prototype that I have, but whatever, like that's, that's a different thing. But my drop off rate was like really large compared to my completed rate when I was looking at it earlier today. And I was like really sad. I was like, I don't, I didn't think like my thing I made sucked that bad. But when I went through, there was a lot where somebody started it, was on it for a couple seconds and then exit out. And it counted that as one. I think people might've clicked in trying to figure out what it was and then maybe clicked out and then clicked back in on a different device or something. I cleared out those because they obviously are not useful to me. And so I feel like I have a little bit better data going on here. It's really cool. It shows you a breakdown of your blocks and average time on it, graph on like completed versus drop off, time, and then like here's all of the sessions. It flags low quality responses, which is really cool so that you can evaluate if these would even be useful to you. Something that I really was excited about, but it didn't work out for me, they have where you can view the sessions. So if you click it, you're supposed to get, and it shows like moves, clicks, scrolls, touches, and where in the session that stuff happened. However, the recording is not available. 
and it's all the way through until you get to their questions. And I don't know why, like, there was a little message that was like, see why this isn't available, and then there's stuff to read, and it basically doesn't answer my question. The whole reason that, like, I wanted to use Useberry is that it would record the screen and it would show the tapping, because I'm really interested in where people dropped off, where people had trouble, like, maybe what buttons didn't work. And I watched a bunch of videos on people using Useberry and they got that data and I saw like they had the recordings and like they showed it. And I did the test, I previewed the test, I tried it before I set it live. And I was able to see like, on, like me, like that's like your preview, you're previewing with yourself. I was able to see like my face <laughs> my screen where I'm touching. So I was like, oh, it's all good. But for whatever reason, it aired out on me. I feel like it has to do with that I did it through XD. The more I look into this, this seems better for Figma than for XD. It's working, people are able to like do it. Like I sent this link to my fiance to do the actual task since he's a father and he qualifies. And I saw him do it. It, on his end, it recorded his screen, it recorded his video. I just think that there is an error in the way that it's bringing the data in and then encoding it. Would have been really helpful to me if like I wanted to iterate on my design further. However, for my case study, I'm just trying to get numerical metrics. So I guess this is fine. Um, it's just something I would say keep in mind if you're considering Useberry, that it seems like there's a glitch with the video. And the video, unfortunately, seems like the strongest aspect of Useberry. So quite unfortunate. I am very interested in trying this with Figma, though, and seeing if it, again, like, I believe it works better for Figma. So I'm interested in trying this with Figma to see if I have better results. I just either have to pay for the account or delete this. So for unmoderated user testing, like, this is amazing. This is definitely a game changer. I... I'm keeping this site bookmarked and I'm gonna like totally remember this for in the future. Hopefully I get a job and like maybe I have to figure out my own way to do unmoderated user testing or I'm freelancing and I need to do unmoderated user testing. Cause like, again, this is a game changer. This is amazing. And I highly recommend, especially since there is the free account with this, I highly recommend anyone who's going through a boot camp or a certificate and is now turning those projects into case studies and needs that impact data to consider looking at this because this just simplifies the data and like it's easy to use. If you prefer unmoderated user testing, this is like gonna be your bread and butter. If you prefer moderated user testing, I think that you can still use this because it creates like flow points and you can send a link to the people that you're moderating and they can take the test and you can still watch them. I prefer unmoderated user testing just because when I'm testing a product, and I say this like also from that I test physical products in my day job, when I'm testing something, I want to try to recreate a very authentic experience to see how the product performs. When I test a cup on my job, I recreate the context in that a consumer would use that cup. If someone would be more aggressive with that cup, I'm more aggressive. If the cup is meant to be used a specific way, but I do know that people can use it another way, I test both ways. All that's to say, when somebody's using an app or a website, they're not using it with somebody watching them use it and helping them or answering their questions. When you are first using an app or a website, you have the onboarding and then you have Google. <laughs> like, there's no moderator to real life. So I prefer unmoderated just because I think you get the most authentic data 
seeing somebody actually try to struggle through it and figure it out is gonna give me the most insight to see if the product that I'm trying to make is a strong product. And it's also gonna give me the most insight to the problems with the product. Again, from that standpoint, I highly recommend Useberry. Useberry totally encapsulates all of that for me and makes it super easy for not only me to set up a test, but for the people I'm sending the test to to actually take the test. I highly recommend it. So any user testing you're doing, check it out. It's really cool. And that's Useberry. Super cool thing I tried out. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That's super cool. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I put out videos pretty regularly. And I just wish you happiness and health, and I hope all of your user testing goes according to plan and is not a headache for you. And I'll see you in the next one.